Grace is America's new sweetheart, winning over the hearts of the outer community, and now they have a lovely companion. Beyond these green hills behind me, the Lakota students document medicinal plants and use artificial intelligence to preserve their native language and cultural traditions. This 1970s plane will be helping those most affected. It will be carrying about 250 pounds of supplies to places like Tallahassee, Panama City, and Apachacola. There's about 2,000 bees in that one frame and in the state of Florida there's about 500,000 bee colonies and as you can see they're very busy bees. Here's a close-up look. Despite the stigmatism surrounding marijuana, Florida is seeing a boom. In this one cultivation center about 800 plants are harvested each week. Following the Parkland school shooting, parents and teachers are making sure they are prepared for an active shooter. Preserving Native American language and integrating it into the digital world. NBC's Clarissa Melendez has the story. Do you really want to seek out building the community here? At this South Dakota summer camp, students are learning both code and culture. The Lakota AI Code Camp is a three-week program for Native teens. Here, they learn how to use AI to preserve their endangered Lakota language. My name is Tatanka Khahi. Uh, it means slow buffalo. The slowest buffalo in the herd has to be the wisest to survive. Tatanka Khahi was a student at the camp two years ago. Today, he helps teach the classes. It's much more than just a coding camp. Without it, I feel I wouldn't be in college or even pursuing the computer science degree. The camp was co-founded in 2021 by data scientist Mason Grimshaw and researcher Michael Runningwolf to gain agency over their language journey, whose work is dedicated to revitalizing native languages using AI and virtual reality. I was super lucky to go to MIT. When I was there, I saw code for the first time ever. Recent data shows Native Americans hold only 0.4% of bachelor's and master's degrees, and only 0.1% of doctorate degrees in computer science. Grimshaw said his great-grandma inspired him to create the coding camp. She had been forced to attend a government-funded boarding school that punished her for speaking Lakota. She was taught and had internalized the idea that you don't want to speak Lakota, that it is not the right way to be. Running Wolf estimates the Lakota population is around 200,000 today. However, a recent study shows only 2,200 people speak Lakota as their first language. Our language is being lost. We want them to start to consider themselves as problem solvers for their community. The Lakota have a deep relationship to the land. Students go on nature walks document medicinal plants, then plug their cultural importance into an app they're designing. Students are going to walk out of here with a mobile web application that leverages an AI model. However, there are challenges with programming indigenous languages. There's as many words in these languages as there are stars in the universe. And so this breaks the algorithm and that's sort of the core of our, our fundamental research. But for the Lakota community, the challenges are worth the gains. It allows them to say, I can do this. I can be in this space because I've seen others like me who are in this space. Native Americans make up less than 1% of leadership roles at tech giants like Apple and Microsoft. I would like to see a future where this type of class is in every high school in Lakota communities. Yeah, we're just going to see if that is the thing. Most of all, students come away from the camp empowered. Meeting a lot of other Native kids, it really helped me like reconnect with my culture. So we need to stay who we are, be who we are, and be proud of who we are. After all, we are the original scientists. Really fascinating report. Clarissa, thank you. Up ahead. This is where lawmakers determine the future of the undocumented community here in North Carolina. Today I spoke with a woman who tells me she worries for the future. When Alejandra moved to the U.S. seven years ago, she never thought her American dream would turn into a nightmare. She says her American husband kept her as a prisoner in her own home for five years before putting her out on the streets. 
At that point, she was fearful of deportation, a fear many undocumented immigrants experienced in recent weeks. ICE stepped up its immigration rates in the state. This comes after a number of sheriffs decided to no longer house ICE detainees in local jails. By non-cooperation policies that force ICE to go into the community to make arrests, that increases the likelihood that ICE will encounter more persons in violation of federal immigration law. This has become an even hotter issue because of what happened here at the legislature yesterday. A bill would force local sheriffs to cooperate with ICE investigations. For us, this is a complete response, uh, uh, another kind of wave of scare tactics, um, and we're basically asking if this does pass for the governor to veto it so that he can show that he is actually looking out for the best interests of the community. For Alejandra, the thought of separating families is heartbreaking. Entonces, cuando te dicen when there is a possibility of deportation, it rips out your soul. The new House bill would fine sheriffs about $26,000 per day if they don't cooperate with ICE officials. ICE spokesman Brian Cox tells me they'll be moving forward with the investigations. My name is Manuel Jimenez, and I'm a student with the program of Homestead Miami Mariachi Conservatory. When I have the dress of mariachi, I feel that it's the last piece of me. It gives me a lot of joy to play the guitar and the trumpet. For me, it's important to represent the Mexican culture. Llegar a más is a blessing for my life para la vida de Manuel. Muchos de los papás llegan aquí con un sueño americano y Mac les ayuda a hacer ese sueño la realidad. He trabajado en nursery, en el campo, piscando fresa, es para sacarlos adelante. Para mí mi mamá es determinado, luchadora y cariñosa. Tenemos actualmente 45 niños en el programa. Las familias son familias agrícolas. En vez en cuando ayuda a mi esposo también a, a piscar fruta, a empacar fruta. Como decimos en México, no nos rajamos. Siempre dando, poniendo la cabeza en alto por la familia, por los hijos. Pues yo estoy completamente agradecida por el programa porque tengo mis dos hijos están ya cuatro años eh, impartiendo la clase de música mariachi. Me siento orgullosa a compartir mis talentos. Yo aprendo las escalas y la nota música. Para mí o sea, es una satisfacción ver a mis hijos tan emocionante en un escenario eh, porque están tocando un instrumento musical, canciones tradicionales que han sido que desde que yo estaba niña en México siempre lo escuchaba con, mis fam con mi familia. ¡Arriba!